Hello guys, uh, thanks for uh, checking out my channel. I think today I want to talk about like uh, the Sixth Sense. I'm sure a lot of you heard about it before. They used to make you know, TV shows and documentaries about it. But I don't hear much about it anymore, especially on TV and stuff. Well, I got rid of TV six years ago anyway, so I don't know, maybe they are talking about it again, but I just remember in the 90s it was like a big thing, and uh, and on the internet there's a lot of people that make YouTube videos about it and, and such, but, uh, and I guess if you never experienced like the sixth sense before, uh, you probably won't understand or relate with what I'm saying or whatever, but I mean I'll try to give you some examples, you know, you ever been somewhere and uh, all of a sudden you just don't feel comfortable being there, you feel like I shouldn't be here, something bad's going to happen, maybe I should leave, you know, the sixth sense is kind of like uh, a sense that trumps the other five senses that you have, it just, it can be anything from having a, a bad feeling or having a good feeling or, you know, actually making a prediction that comes true, uh, walking into somewhere and all of a sudden you get the image of a person that you haven't seen for five years and then five minutes later, you know, you run into that person. That's kind of like the sixth sense kind of uh, thing. You know, it's, it's, it's an experience and you don't really know what it is until you actually experience it. And I don't know if everybody has the ability to experience it or not. Um, I just know from my own personal experience, I've experienced it a lot, a lot, a lot in my lifetime. And <clears throat> I don't know what to make of it. I don't know how to, I don't know, I don't know how to improve it. I don't really know how to use it, you know. I mean, if I was really good at it, you know, maybe I could predict winning lottery numbers, that would be awesome, but it just doesn't seem to work that way, <clears throat> and it can be like the, ran the most random thing, you know, so I was going to go through some of my life experiences with it, and if you've experienced before, please let me know, like comment below, like what was like the coolest one you ever experienced, you know, um, as a child, you know, I... <laughs> I guess I had a very open mind and stuff like that, but, like, when I was a kid, I had a lot of experience with, like, seeing spirits and ghosts and shit like that, stuff you really couldn't explain, and, uh, didn't really know what to make of it, except that it would scare the shit out of me sometimes, um, especially, like, the dark, shadowy figures, if you ever experienced those, oh, I remember this one, it just, like, came through the house and... Like, it opened the door, Kane walked down the hallway towards me. I was a little kid. I had my race cars on the floor because I was staying up past my bedtime. And uh, I, uh, you know, I just wanted to play with my race cars. And this thing opens up the door, comes in. It's just a dark, shadowy figure. It looks like a guy, but it's just totally, it's all shadow. It's like, there's no color to it. There's no... Uh, three-dimensional look to it, it's just black, you know, and so I run, and I jump in my bed, I hide under the covers, you know, and I pull the covers down, and it's standing at the door, then it starts walking into the door towards me in my bedroom, and just as it's about to touch my hand, and at this point, I'm, like, scared shitless, I'm, like, totally frozen, you know, just about as it's about to touch my hand, its finger, like, its hand is coming down to touch my hand, it just simply disappears. And so I went to sleep that night, and then I remember waking up the next morning, and there were my race cars sitting out in the hallway where I was playing with them the night before, because when I woke up, I thought it was just a bad dream, but it looked like it turned out to be true. I had a bunch of other experiences with stuff I've seen, and I kind of had these experiences, I would say, up until about I was like 21, you know, it, especially like if I was driving on the road and that, this was like why I was in the Marine Corps, all these like little black shadowy figures started running across the road and I was like, what the fuck, you know, it just, it was really weird, 
and um, but anyway, that's just part of the story there. Um, I mean, I saw how when I was in Honduras in the Marine Corps, we had like a black, huge triangular like uh, UFO fly over our base. Uh, that never made it into the news or anything, but I remember looking at it, and it was just, it didn't frighten me, though. It didn't um, scare me in the least bit. Um, it just certified the fact that I already made up in my mind that there is life out there in other places, and anybody who wants to call it a top-secret government plane or anything like that, uh, I don't know. That's not the experience... That's not the feeling I got from it when I saw it. Uh, it just seemed otherworldly. You know, it didn't emit a sound. It was only going like maybe 30, 35 miles an hour. It basically just kind of glided over the base. And I've had other people, well, how do you know it wasn't a stealth bomber? Well, I just know that, you know, stealth bombers have to fly at least 200 miles an hour just to stay in the air. This thing was gliding over our base like a gigantic kite had a light in the front and two lights on the side and then two lights in the the corners and it was just a perfectly shaped triangle it was just it was really weird and i've seen some other ufos in that and but i don't want to get off topic it's just i've experienced a lot in my life and uh like with the sixth sense thing um i've had multiple i mean probably dozens and dozens of like scenarios where I would walk into the mall or I'd go into Walmart or I'd go to a gas station and all of a sudden an image would pop in my mind of somebody I haven't seen in a long time and then what you know I'd run into them like a few minutes later at Walmart or at the mall and this has even happened like in places where I was far away from um I remember when I uh got out of the Marine Corps, it was like in April uh, 1999, and then I started going to college, I used to keep in touch with my one friend Jackson, he was like this six foot seven black dude, really cool guy, Um, but he was like a skinny tall guy or whatever, and uh, some years passed, and I kind of lost touch with him, and then one night I had a dream that I met Jackson, um, like actually met him down in Florida, but he was older. He had, uh, you know, he had like, uh, the grayness to, uh, his goatee and, but he was all built. Like he was working out, like he was totally like ripped and stuff. And I, when I woke up, I was like, wow, that was a weird dream, you know? Well, wouldn't you know, an hour later I get, uh, after I get done taking a shower and stuff, I come back to my room and then there's a message on my phone and the message is from Jackson and uh, a guy I didn't talk to for like three years and so I got on my email account and I shot him an email and uh, I said dude that's so weird I just had a dream like about running into you last night and you were like older but you were like all chiseled and built and everything and then he sends me back an email a few minutes later with a picture. And he's like, dude, that is so weird. And he's like, look at my picture. And then, like, in the picture, he's all buff and stuff because he's been working out at the gym for the last two years. And I was like, wow, you know, that that is just strange. Um, but I've just been having examples like that, like, all my life. And especially... Um, with people I know, it seems to work better, like, if I get to know you, I can usually, after a few weeks, I can tell, like, when you're lying, and when you're not lying, um, I can kind of pick up on what you're doing during the day, and stuff like, it's really, I don't know how to explain it, it just, images just pop in my head, and they're, like, so lucid, they just... I could be like here right now, like talking, like like I'm t- this video making this video for you guys right now, and all of a sudden, boom, a, a, an image will just like like a really powerful image. It'll just overtake my own eyesight, and just you know flash before my eyes, and I'll be like, I some most of the times I don't know what they mean. 
some of the times, you know, I can figure out what they mean. I don't know how to read into it and that, and I honestly haven't really taken the time to research it to see if other people have been experiencing it and stuff. Um, but, uh, let me see. I think probably it's, it's a cool thing to have sometimes. Sometimes, like, I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes I'll just be, like, in a zone, and I'll be totally in tune with it. Like, for example, one night I went to this one tavern in our town, and I'm talking to the bartender there. She's known me for a while. And all of a sudden, things just started popping in my head. And I was telling the bartender and the the two guys to the right of me, I said, uh, you know, the bar was dead. I think it was just a slow, like, Thursday night. And I said, I don't know why, but I just know that two blondes and a brunette are going to come in. And I even pointed out what seats they were going to sit in. And uh, they were like, yeah, whatever. Wishful thinking, you know. Well, won't you know, five minutes later, two blondes and a brunette walk in. And they sit in the same exact seats that I had specified. And then I said, you know what? I haven't seen this guy Kyle for a while, but I bet Kyle's going to come in next. And what you know, Kyle walks in in the door. At this t- at this point, my bartender's you need to stop because you're really freaking me out. And I'm like, I can't help but laugh because it was just that powerful it was coming to me. And it's it's happened during like when I'd watch football games. You know, I I would just predict the next 12 plays, and they would just end what would happen, like if a fumble or if this would be catched and how many yards, it would just come to me. And uh, I just wish I knew how to use it every day because I think it would make my life a lot easier. Um, But uh, what I wanted to really get into is like when it comes down to relationships because that's where my ability makes it rough because like when I start dating a girl, I can pick up on very quickly like that when she's lying to me and not lying to me about something <clears throat> if, if for example like when I was in the Marine Corps there was this one girl Shelly that I was dating and we hung out a lot and stuff and um, one night you know I brought my friend Stump with me and she met my friend Stump and yes Stump is was his actual name and if you're picturing a big buff dude, you know, that's dumb as a brick, you you nailed it because his name fit him for some reason. But anyway, that's besides the point. So they, they only met once. And this is like back in the 90s when a lot of people didn't even have cell phones and shit like that. And uh, so I continued to see Shelly for, you know, about another two months after that. And during that whole time, you know, there was never any indication that her and Stump had anything going on together behind my back or anything like that. You know, it actually kind of left my mind that I even introduced Stump to her. And the one time, I'm just, that one night, I'm laying in my bunk bed, and all of a sudden, an image flashes right in front of my head, in front of my eyes. It was an image of Stump's Camaro sitting outside Shelly's house where she was living. And I was like, huh, this is weird. Oh, and then I'll have to tell you how I met Shelly. <laughs> That's even weirder yet. Um, I thought this was really strange, so I was compelled to get into my car and drive to Shelly's house. And of course, when I got to Shelly's house, Stump's car was parked like right in front of it. And then I went in, I confronted her, you know, it was just, it was ugly. But anyway, um, I guess I should tell you how I met this girl in the first place. Uh, When I was stationed in Camp Lejeune, like down in Jacksonville, they had a lot of strip clubs and stuff down there. And of course, being a young guy, you, you go to the strip clubs and stuff. But there was always this one dive strip club that I would drive by like every day. And uh, I never felt the urge to go in there or anything like that at all. And the one night, I had a dream that I went to this strip club. I went inside. The walls were green. 
and I meet this girl, you know, and I, it was just weird. So <laughs> I, what I did was I followed my dream. I, like a week later or so, I visited this establishment. When I walked inside, well, to my amazement, the walls were green. Never been in this place before. And then I meet this girl who's not a stripper. She's actually just the, uh, uh, like a waiter or waitress or host or whatever working there. And that's how I met Shelly. So that, I don't think that was good, especially the way it turned out. I think my ability kind of just set me up for the fall there. But, um, but as I said, if you ever experience something like that, like if you ever get like a flash in uh, a picture in front of your face, maybe you should look into it a little bit more, especially if you're dating somebody and you have the feeling that they could possibly be cheating on you. I'm sure we've all been cheated on before and it's not a good feeling. Um, I just got out of a, another relationship, you know, I just kept getting these powerful images of her cheating on me with this guy that lived upstairs from her because she lived in an apartment building and uh lo and behold it turned out to be true you know and so it kind of sucks because you just can't somebody who's kind of like in tune with their sixth sense you can't bullshit them you can't lie to them and like i was saying before my abilities seem to get better if I know you personally. So if I know you personally and I've known you for a while or we're intimate or whatever, I can just pick up on it. I can, I can, it just pops in my head. I don't know why. It'd be nice if somebody could explain it to me, but I don't know why it, it happens. I don't know why um, it does. Like I've even, I've predicted earthquakes. I've, you know, I've, I've predicted tragedies you know, stuff, and I never, you know, I never record these things, but now I'm getting into it where I'm going to start, I'm going to start seeing if, you know, this holds up, like, if I get any kind of image of something bad happening and stuff, you know, I want to, I want to get it documented, and, you know, just, just to build credibility, I guess, but I, I had some other weird ones, too, like, I live in a small town, and nothing really happens here. Um, I remember the one day I was up in my my bedroom working on something, and I thought to myself, you know what? It would be nice just to see one hot chick in a bikini, you know, walking down my street, you know. <laughs> and lo and behold, you know, like ten minutes later, in this town, this small town, there is a hot chick walking in a bikini down my street and it was just like I just laughed to myself because I it 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 was just it was really really uh it was just funny it was comical uh I even did that at work once I I worked when I worked at uh this place called uh well I won't give the name of it I don't like giving out my information that much but uh I was working at a wholesale distributor for pond equipment and you know it it was just a warehouse, you know, and usually all we got in there were contractors, you know, just big, fat, ugly dudes and stuff, you know, they, you, you never get anything nice in there, and I remember the one day I was there, and I was telling the guy Doug there, I said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if a hot blonde just walked in here, you know, <laughs> he's like, he just laughed, and he's like, yeah, that would be nice, but uh, I think we have a better chance of winning the lottery, he said, and what you know, like another 10, 15 minutes later, a hot blonde walks in. She uh, worked with UPS. She was trying to sell us on UPS because we were using FedEx at the time. So I got, I oh my God, I have so many other examples in that. I think you'd really hate to be my friend because like, I, you know, I won't tell you either. I, I keep it to myself. Like if you're lying to me about something, I usually know it, but I don't. You know, I, I'm assuming there's a reason you're lying about it, and if you're my, and, and if it's, and if I don't feel it has any way to really hurt me, then so be it. I, I'm not really gonna, to to worry about it and stuff. So, but uh, but it has made relationships hard for me because you just wouldn't believe how much attention 
your girlfriend, you know, or someone you've been dating for a while, how much attention they get from other men every day. It's like there's always that's your downside of dating pretty girls, I guess, cuz there's you're always going to be in competition for them. There's always other guys trying to make their move and you know, these people, these guys, most of them don't give a shit, you know. They just want a piece of ass and you know, they're they're going to they're going to fight for her attention. And that's just that's just one of the flaws of humanity, I guess. <clears throat> I mean, I can't uh, say I haven't done it before, because I have, you know. But uh, it's just when it gets to the lying part, and then usually when a, an image... I've experienced it enough now that, like, when an image of, like, my girlfriend is fucking around with another guy pops in my head, like, in front of my eyes, I just know that it happened. And so it kind of makes it rough. And I'm kind of tired of I don't know if there's any honest, faithful women out there anymore anyway to begin with. But, um, so I guess that's kind of like my rant on the sixth sense. So, if I mean, if you don't have it, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you don't have it, I, I think you're better off not having it. Um, sometimes it can make your day. Other times it can just fucking flip your life upside down, you know, um, and it kind of sucks, because now that I'm getting older, and I guess because I got rid of TV and stuff, it's kind of like, it's kind of like amplifying for me, like for a while there, God, it was like two years ago, for like a three-year span, every, every morning I would get up, you know, there would be I would just see an image of a person standing, somebody I'd never seen before, you know, there'd just be like an image of a person standing over me and stuff, and it was like, okay, am I like daydreaming here, because I feel like I'm up, you know, and I would be up, and then there's a person just there standing, staring at me, you know, and it was like, really, really creepy, you know, and after a three-year span, then that went away, it was just kind of, uh, I'm glad it did go away, it was, it was kind of, uh, driving me nuts, to be honest with you, and, uh, I don't know, if, if any of you guys ever experienced stuff like that before, please comment below and let me know, um, I mean, I have a, I'm, I have a pretty solid head on my shoulders, I got tons of common sense, you know, I went to Marines, I graduated college, I have my own business now, it, but uh, but for as for that sixth sense thing, if you're ever wondering if it's actually true or not, well, I'm here to tell you, like, fucking through my own experience, that shit is true, and I don't know why, I don't know how it works, or or why it works, or or whatever, but for some reason it's there, and and for some reason some of us have it and some of us don't. And I, I don't know why. So, but I thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, I mean, other, I guess, interesting things I've had happen in my life, like, happen to do with, like, coincidences. Just, like, even with, uh, like, for, huh. <sighs> if I, I guess I got the time to go through this. Um, like, I remember when I was in high school, um, there was this girl that liked me, uh, her name was Jessica Ike or whatever, and, uh, I don't know, I just really wasn't interested in her or anything like that, and, uh, well, she ended up dying on that plane explosion or whatever that flew out of, uh, I think it was out of New York or New Jersey, it was like, plane 838, for whatever reason, it just, it was in the 90s, it it blew up, and it killed, uh, what was it, like, 38 high school kids from, uh, Montoursville, Pennsylvania, and, uh, I don't know, I felt really bad about that, you know, and the news, or media, and government, they never, they never really gave us a solid reason as to why that plane blew up, you know, um, then when they had the Olympics in Georgia in 1994, this girl that I dated for a little bit that I took to the prom, there was a terrorist attack there. I remember that guy had an explosive device and blew it up down there or whatever. 
And then uh, my cousin Christy, who lived in Glendale, Arizona, she worked in the same building that the uh, that Viper militia group that they busted in the 90s that was planning to blow it up and stuff. Um, I even had a connection with the Oklahoma bombing. I don't want to go into that. But that also affected, like, my life as well. And that's just, like, the terrorist stuff. Other coincidences was, like, uh, I remember my stepdad and my mom flew out to California to see me in 29 Palms. They asked, you know, they just missed me, I guess, you know. And I was like, all right, you know. So, and they asked me where I wanted to go. I said, well, I I wouldn't mind going to Vegas. I'd never been there. So, we went to Vegas and then on the way home we got lost you know we didn't have gps and stuff like that and when you're lost out in the middle of let me tell you when you're lost out in the middle of like vegas or not vegas but nevada and in the southern part of california i mean it just the roads go on and on and you don't see anything well we're there driving and we finally reached one gas station like and it was a, like a gas station restaurant like out in the middle of nowhere i don't even know how this place has business or how it stays open but we go in there and what you know i run into a guy that i went to boot camp with and he just happened to be going back to 29 palms and he knew the way so we were able to follow follow him home which was uh pretty convenient and stuff um Another big coincidence I had was like when I was in Honduras, we uh, we were told <clears throat> we weren't going to get any civilian leave or anything like that. So none of us brought civilian clothes. We all brought camis. Well, one night, out of the kindness of the Marine Corps' heart, they let us go out for like six hours from like six to twelve. So I watched my first movie first movie I watched down there was Saving Private Ryan, but it had English subtitles, but it was in Spanish or whatever. Then after that, we went to a bowling alley. So there was like a group of five or six of us. So we're at this bowling alley, and uh, this American dude comes up behind us. He's like, hey, these girls have been talking about you guys like all night. They're wondering if you want to talk to them. And we turned around. We're like, yeah. I said, after we're done with this game. Because, hell, we didn't see American women for like four or five months at the time. And what you know, if you don't know where Honduras is, it's in Central America. I live in Pennsylvania. Well, you know, the first girl I walk up to, she sees my name tag. And she's like, she says my last name. And I'm like... I'm like, uh, mall. And I'm like, yeah. Um, she's like, do you have any, she's like, do you have any uncles? And I'm like, well, yeah. I said, I have several uncles. I said, and she's like, do you have a Roger mall? And I was like, are you from Phoenix, Arizona? And she's like, yeah. She's like, I'm your uncle Roger's neighbor. And like, she knew my family, my, my cousins and stuff. And I've been out to visit them twice why I was stationed at 29 Palms and I never even met her once out there but I end up meeting her in Honduras in a bowling alley on the one night that uh, the Marine Corps decided to give us you know six hours of leave time and uh, I just thought that was pretty amazing in itself you know I've had a bunch of other like little coincidences but that was probably the biggest one um like, after I got out of the Marine Corps and went to college, you know, my stepdad, he had cancer and stuff, but he ended up dying on 9-11 just by chance, you know. He he just, I don't know what it, I just picked a, a bad time to go, I guess. I don't know. That was just one of those other weird coincidences. And I don't know, it's just, I have so many unusual things that happen and stuff, and having this sixth sense ability it's nice sometimes but like when it gets down to the important stuff like relationships it can really interfere with it 
because I guess every every in every relationship you're gonna have your lies. You're not gonna be told the truth every time. I I know I've dated enough women to know it's like I haven't met one one woman yet that doesn't lie. And uh, I'm not saying all my relationships ended because they cheated. It just ended because they didn't work out and stuff. But I had two relationships where there was cheating involved, and the visions came to my head. And I nailed both of them twice, and then the truth came out. You know, it was like, okay, I'm, I think I got that part of my ability down. I can tell when somebody's cheating on me now. So, um, I don't know if a guy would want that. Depends how much you're in love with the woman you're seeing, and how much it could uh, actually crush your heart. So, but all right, guys, if you, you know, if you have experience with a sixth sense type of deal stuff. You know, leave your comments below in that, or let me know what your best, you know, your most coolest, like, Sixth Sense experience was, you know, did you leave a building before it blew up, or, you know, do you, did you decide not to cross that bridge that collapsed, you know, like, five minutes later, or a minute later, I mean, anything like that, you know, um, but thanks for listening, and, uh, I'll make sure to post some more videos, thanks, bye.